Okay. Um, the first talk I did here was talking about flags, but I'm going to go back to science now. I'm going to talk about a molecule called ATP, what I call nature's unsung, he unsung hero. Now, a lot of you won't have heard of ATP, but you may have heard of these molecules. So DNA, hopefully everyone's heard of, as well as uh, proteins, of which enzymes are a type of protein. Carbohydrates, such as sugars, your starch, very much found in potatoes. But you may not have heard of ATP. ATP is this molecule here. Now, its full name is adenosine triphosphate, which I'm not going to mention again. Um, please don't be put off by the uh, rather scary figure of it, but the key thing is the three orange and red bits on the left. Now, it's got plenty of roles. It's got, as we'll see, it's got a key role in DNA, cell signaling, essentially how bits of your body talk to each other, and most importantly, as an energy currency. So DNA is, hopefully we all know, the language of the genes, where the units of heredity are. It's also known as the blueprint of life, and it consists of four what are called base pairs, and these are A, C, G, and T. And the A is ATP. So no ATP, no DNA. And just to illustrate that, you can see uh, the ATP marked as yellow in this strand of DNA, so obviously it makes up about a quarter of it. So absolutely vital for DNA. So none of us would be here about ATP. Cell signaling, as I said, there's lots of chemical pathways in the body that are vital for regulation. A classic example in which ATP is involved is the adrenaline response, your flight or fight response. So in this pathway, uh, stress releases adrenaline, and that adrenaline causes ATP to uh, be turned into another pet chemical of mine, something called cyclic AMP. And that goes on to um, initiate a whole load of other processes. So no ATP, no stress response. But its most important role is an energy currency. And it answers a fundamental question, how do we get energy from our food? How do we then use that energy? Obviously, we're not literally burning it. We're using ATP. Now, the ATP molecule itself is in what's called a high energy state. And as I said before, if you look on the left where the red and orange balls are, that's where a lot of the energy is. So when one of those groups comes off, that releases a lot of energy. And that energy is used to fuel a whole load of processes. So to sum up this particular section, any process that gives what's called usable energy makes ATP. So that's when you, you know, for a better word, burn food, when uh, plants um, uh, turn light energy into chemical energy. And just to make it even more basic, so any usable energy is essentially stored as ATP, and when ATP is used up, it gives out energy. So we're just going to have a look at a few of these processes. Now I'm going to have a look, uh, look at enzymes. Now these are proteins, and they're the cell's chemical factories. They're, they're the powerhouses. They convert one chemical to another, and there's about 4,000 enzyme reactions known to man. And a typical enzyme looks a bit like this. Here you can see it's converting chemical A into chemical B, and it's doing that by using the energy from ATP. So without ATP, you wouldn't have any ATP-dependent enzymes. It's also important for a process called active transport. Now, usually if you've got a load of molecules in a space, they will diffuse out and fill that space. But in many cases, you really, really don't want that in nature. You want to keep things compartmentalized. And there are enzymes uh, throughout nature which do that. They pump, a, uh, uh, they pump uh, chemicals from areas of low concentration to higher concentration using the energy of ATP to do that. One thing we can all see is muscle contraction. And muscle contraction is fueled pretty much directly from ATP. So me talking, me flexing my rather puny muscles, that all requires ATP. So no ATP, no muscle contraction. And one quite unique thing about ATP is that it is truly universal. Every species we've ever examined uses ATP. Um, with DNA, you always have to have this little caveat of various viruses don't use DNA, but everything uses ATP. And just to sum up, I'm going to go through the importance with a few numbers. Your body contains about 250 grams. That's about eight ounces, about two-quarter pound of burgers of ATP. But it's used for so much 
but you will use up your own body weight in ATP every day. So hopefully that's convinced you how important ATP is. Thank you very much.